All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get started in child's pose. Uh, my name is Byron. I'm going to take you guys through it today. Uh, this is a 60-minute flow that we're about to experience, but before we start to get the body right, we just start to get the mind right. Good. So first, just feel the, the restorative nature of this pose. So all the activity in the, in the mind and the body starts to subside. And then step one would be acknowledgement. So acknowledgement of any little sensation that you feel, any little thing that you hear, the thought patterns that may formulate. Good. Non-attachment to these things that you acknowledge. So you just kind of let them pass through you like energy, like water. Just kind of let them go. And step two would be acknowledgement or actually attachment. So attachment, meaning you want to attach yourself to one thing. In this case, we're going to attach ourselves to the breath. Okay. So really start to hone in and focus on the sound your breath is making, the way it feels, every little detail about it. Uh, for me, it's usually the exhale first, because you can find a little more friction on the back side of the throat on the exhale. And then next would be the inhale, trying to make a, a rhythmic quality to your breath. So it's a little more symmetrical. And then ob obviously noticing the suspension at the top of the inhale and the bottom of the exhale. So there's actually four parts to the breath. So it's always an oscillation. It's always moving. It's never actually still. You're not holding it. And then there is no step three. I guess if there was a step three, it would be if the mind starts to wander, just to come back to your breath. Now, the challenge is to change the shape of your body, but to maintain the same focal point the entire practice. And just so you know, if you need to come back to child's pose, especially if you're new, you know, please come back here. We like to encourage you to do this on your own rather than as a group. But for now, let's go ahead and start to get into the physical part of the practice. Stretch your arms out in front of you if they're down by your sides. And spread those fingers nice and wide. Good. Over the next rhythmic inhale, rock up onto the hands and the knees. Curl the toes. And as you exhale, lift your hips up and back. First active pose. Downward facing dog. Now we'll break it down a little more. Breaking down dog in a moment. But first, go ahead and slide forward to plank position. So it's Take the flexibility out of down dog and use strength. Know that you can set your knees down. I encourage people to set their knees down all the time. It's a nice modification. Otherwise, I'm going to give you guys a, something physically, like an analogy that I want you to apply to the rest of the practice. I want you to envision a square in the center of your body. So around your core, your abdomen, a square. Then imagine that you're in a bubble, a circle that encapsulates your entire body. So it's a nice circle. From a physical standpoint, we're trying to create space in our body. So think about contracting the square in the center of the body and expanding the bubble. Not just here, but in every pose. So you're pulling the chest forward. You're driving the tailbone down towards the heels. You're pressing the heels back. You'll take one more inhale here and then press back the downward facing dog as you exhale and apply that same analogy to this pose. So you're spreading those fingers wide driving the heels down. The hips are sloping up and back. It's like an anterior tilt of your pelvis up. Good. And then, yeah, know that you don't have to force the legs straight here, especially it's just the tip of the iceberg just warming up. Maybe later in the practice you could straighten them. Good. And let's just start to warm up a little bit here. Slide forward to plank pose as you inhale. Chaturanga. Bend your elbows halfway lower as you exhale. Inhale, press straight up to plank. And then downward facing dog as you exhale. Two more of those. Remember, the knees can always come down. Inhale, slide forward, plank pose. Bend the elbows, exhale, lower. Inhale, press up. Downward facing dog, exhale. One more time. Inhale, slide forward. Elbows bend, exhale. Inhale, straight up, plank. Nice. Downward facing dog, exhale. And from here, go ahead and release both of your knees down onto the floor. Knees underneath the hips, shoulders over the wrists. And extend your left leg straight back. And reach your right arm straight forward. 
side. So think about it this way. You know, if you were to lift your limbs higher than shoulder and hip height here, you would actually shorten your spine. So you would lose the integrity of what we're trying to do, creating space. So maybe if you had a physical objective today, it would be to be an inch taller by the time you walked out of here. Good. Try to get in the habit of flexing your, your foot, your left foot. There's three ways to flex it. You can dorsiflex it, point the toes down, press the heel back. That's what I like to do. You could even point the toes back if that's what you prefer. Or demi-point, more of a dancing technique. The ball of the foot presses back. Yeah, just take one more inhale, get longer, and then exhale. Set the hand and the knee down, simply switch sides. And start with your right leg. Just get it nice and straight, flex the foot. Belly draws up, reach the left arm forward. And there's a great example here of that square in the center of the body contracting up. And then expanding the bubble. So if you actually could hit the back of the room with your right foot, you would. And if you could touch second street with your left hand, you would. Good. Nice. And from here, just taking one more inhale, getting longer. And then exhale, set everything down. Go ahead and curl the toes under, lift the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. And then go ahead and lift your right leg straight back behind you. Yeah. And again, habit of flexing the right foot. We're going to add on to all this stuff later. Right now it all starts real simple. It's an all-levels class, so it's going to be all kinds of options for you guys today. And then switch. Set your right foot down. Lift your left leg up. And lift from your inner thigh. See how straight you can get that left leg. Yeah, that's... Good. Set it down. Good. Slide forward to plank pose. Lift your right toes. If it's too much and you have your knees down, obviously you're not going to lift your toes. Good. Squeeze the knee to your nose. Right knee to the chest. Squeeze it in. Try to step it all the way through between your hands. See if you can get it all the way up there. Good. Climb up to the fingertips. Start to pull your chest forward. Yeah, really straighten out your left leg. And then reach your arms down by your sides, parallel to the floor. It's kind of like a runner's lunge. If you can touch your hands behind the back, interlace the fingers, and then pull the knuckles away from the crown of the head. Yeah, so you're not lifting the, the hands up yet. You're just pulling them back. It's more about your chest. Good. Good. And then from here, crescent pose. Put a little bend in your left knee, and as you inhale, reach your arms straight up vertically. Good. And again, you want to contract the square so you're not dumping into the lower back. So the belly draws in. You see what a lot of people do is they're good at expanding the circle on the outside of the body, but they also expand in their belly so they'll dump into their lower back and they actually create more tension that way. Good. Bring your hands down to the ground. Go ahead and plant your left palm down and reach your right arm up. You can use the fingertips or a block here if it's preferable, if you have shorter arms. And just modifying as you go. And on the contrary, you know, especially a lot of guys are good at contracting the square and being really tight and strong, but then they wilt around the edges, so they're not expressing or actually creating more space. But yeah, they might get a good workout out of the practice, but they don't increase their flexibility. And we're looking to be more like bamboo, supple but also strong. Not a wet noodle, not an unflexible rock. You know, bring your right hand down, simply step back to downward facing dog. Good. Slide forward to plank pose. Lift your left toes. Again, if your knees are down, you're going to skip this part. Good. Pull the left knee to your chest. Squeeze it in. Round the shoulder. Step the left foot through, all the way through. and Come up to your fingertips. Pull the chest forward. Spread it wide. And then reach your arms down by your sides. Yeah, it's a runner's lunge. Again, take the hands behind the back. If you can reach that, interlace the fingers. Knuckles pull away from the crown of your head. Feel the cervical spine here. That's your neck. Try to get longer in the neck. Yeah, so you just kind of tilt that chin in a little. And feel the breath, the oscillation, the inhale, the exhale. And then for me, I always put a nice bend in my right knee to come up to crescent pose. Vertically, reach the arms up. That's an inhale. Good. Again, feel the square. The middle of the body's pulling in. But you're expressing from that center point outwards. Good. Expand the bubble. So it's almost like collectively... We're all holding the roof up with our fingertips. So if I was going to come over and try to pull your arm down, I'd have a heck of a time because you're so strong. Good. Bring your hands down to the ground. Plant your right palm or fingertips. Reach your left arm straight up. Good. Yeah. Just kind of feel what you feel. It's another side of the body. Lumbar spine. 
Just deepening that breath as we go. Good. Place your left hand down on the ground. Step back to downward facing dog. And go ahead and slide forward to plank pose. Inhale. And then lower all the way down. Slow, slow, slow. Down to your belly. And once you get there, release the tops of your feet. Reach your arms forward out in front of you like you're about to karate chop the floor. Pinkies down, thumbs up. Good. Lift your right foot off the ground six inches. Lift your left hand off the ground six inches. So it's opposite limb movement. Yeah, and then lift your head, but lengthen your neck so you're not looking forward with your eyes. There's nothing to look at here. And then release and switch. Right arm, left leg. And again, it's not too much about height here. It's all about length. Yeah. And then slowly release down. Go ahead and lift all four limbs off the ground. Again, length, not height. Reach forward, reach backwards. Feel the inner thighs rolling up. Feel the lower back starting to get warm. Keep your legs up. Start to slide your hands back so your thumbs are by your upper ribs. Just place all ten fingertips on the ground. Lift the, the heel of your hand. Just the fingertips. Pull the elbows in tight. Find a sustainable place here so you can float your hands off the floor an inch just for a couple of breaths. Feel your back muscles ignite. The chest is still pouring, pulling forward. Good, just like that. Now palms flat, set the feet down, cobra pose. Inhale, roll your shoulders back, lift your heart. Good, and then downward facing dog right back to the start. Curl the toes, press up, press back. And for those of you that are a little more experienced with upward facing dog, you're welcome to move on to that. If you're a little newer, Stay with Cobra. Bend your elbows every time. Good. Moving on from here, palms flat, fingers spread wide, heels low, hips high. Take an inhale, bend the knees, look forward, and then step, float or fly to the top of the mat. Good. Flat back inhale, hands on shins, chest forward, fold in as you exhale. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, glance forward, and then fold in as you exhale one more time. Inhale, flat spine. And then fold in as you exhale. Good. Press down through your feet. Go ahead and stand up for the first time. Sweep your arms up and over the head. And then pull the hands to the heart center. Exhale. Take a few deep breaths. Maybe close the eyes. Feel nice and tall. Good. Take the biggest inhale of your day so far. It holds your breath at the top. Open the mouth, let it go. <sighs> Good, open the eyes. Inhale, sweep your arms forward and up. Forward fold as you exhale. Take your time. You can even bend the knees a little if you'd like. Flat back, inhale. I usually step back for the first one. You can hop back if you'd like. Lower down, slow. First full vinyasa. So perfect form, chaturanga, elbows in. Cobra, bent elbows or upward facing with the arms straight. And then back to downward facing as you exhale. Hips high. And then just back to the breath, steady the breath, steady the mind. Let's do another one of those, and then we'll start to complicate things. Inhale, lift the hips, bend the knees, look forward, step or lightly spring to the top of the mat. Inhale, glance forward, fold in as you exhale. And press down, stand up, sweep the arms so high over the head, and then hands to the heart center. Good, exhale. We'll do that again. Inhale, sweep and reach, feel the side body stretch. Forward fold, exhale, dip and drop your head. Flat back, inhale, fingertips or shins. Step or lightly hop your feet back. Lower down, keep your elbows in, in tight. Cobra upward facing until it feels just right. Downward facing dog. Steady breath, steady mind. Good, nice job. Step your feet together, slide forward to plank pose. Remember the knees can come down if you need them to. You know, I read something pretty frustrating the other day. It says that you know, we only really read here 25% of the things that we're listening to. It's only 25%. It's kind of frustrating from my point of view, knowing that I'm going to talk a lot. You're only going to hear 25% of what I say. So with the feet together, keep both hands down. Roll onto the outer edge of your left foot. Good. Both hands are down, listeners. Good. It's a rotation of your hips. Press your right hand down firmly. You come back to center as you inhale. Switch as you exhale. Yeah. Naturally, the left hand gets lighter, but try to emphasize it. Press it more firmly into the ground. 
Good. Inhale, center plank. Exhale, lower slow. Good. Cobra upward, feel the flow. Downward facing dog, exhale, let your head go. Good. Inhale, lift the hips and bend the knees. Step or lightly spring to the top of the mat, please. Flat back, inhale, create the space. Fold in over the space, exhale. Stand up, sweep the arms over the head. <laughs> Hands to heart center, exhale. Do it again. Inhale, sweeping and reaching, arms rising. Forward fold, exhale, dipping and diving. Flat back, inhale, create it again. And then step or hop the feet back. Lower down and keep your elbows in, in tight. Cobra upward facing until it feels just right. Downward facing dog, exhale, steady the breath. Steady the mind. This time, feet together and down dog. Feet together. Lift your right leg. Good. Really let your left heel press down. Maybe it's on the floor, maybe not. Let this calf stretch. Good. Stay here, level one. Level two, climb up to your left fingertips. Left fingertips. Press your right palm into the floor. Level three, float your left arm forward in a handshake position. Good. Now you see how technique starts to matter. Switch, downward facing dog, right foot next to left, inhale, lift your left leg, stay here. Remember the energizing effect, expand the circle if you stand a chance for level two to climb up to the right fingertips. Good. Contract the square if you stand a fighting chance for level three, reach the right arm forward simultaneously. Downward facing dog. Inhale, slide forward, plank pose. Exhale, lower down, perfect form. Cobra up dog, starting to get the body warm. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Good, nice job. Inhale, tilt your hips up, bend the knees, step or lightly, slingshot. Feet to the top of the mat, please. Flat back, inhale. Fold in, exhale. Standing, sweeping, arms rising. Hands where the heart is. Exhale. Good. Again, inhale, sweep and reach. Synchronize the breath as you move. Forward fold. Exhale. Find that personal groove. Flat back. Inhale. Hands on shins. Step or hop the feet back again. Lower down. Elbows in. Cobra upward facing dog. Lift the chest. Good. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Good. Just do your best. That's all you can ask for. Non-competitive practice. Let the ego go. Feel what you feel. Experience the energy around you. Use your breath as a distraction that it, away from any other distraction. Good. Widen your stance a little in down dog, just a couple inches, but narrow your stance with your hands. Hands a little closer, about an inch or two. Slide forward to plank pose. Good. This will frustrate a lot of you. Reach your right arm forward in a handshake position. Good. Use your strong left arm or skip it. Add the left toes if you want more. Good. Notice how there's options. Good. Switch if you tried it. Toes down, hand down. Starts with your left, left arm. Reach it forward. Obviously, if you have a wrist injury, you're going to skip this. If you want to strengthen your wrist, you can do it. Spread your fingers wide and press the floor away. Add the toes if you're crazy. Downward facing dog. Good. Unplug the hands and crawl them back towards your toes. Hook your big toes with your first two fingers. Inhale. Pull your chest out. Fold as you exhale. Gently round. Good. Check your neck. Make sure there's no unnecessary tension being held. You see, a lot of this practice is just about efficiency. So we have a finite amount of energy. It's definitely changing throughout the practice. You don't want to waste your energy. You're always spending it. Spend it wisely. Just meaning, you know, if you need to go to the restroom, go. If you don't, don't. If you need to pin the lit, the, pick the lint off your toes, pick the lint off your toes. If you don't, don't. Good. Release the toes. Bring your hands up to your hip bones. Put a bend in your knees and pull the heart forward, please. Come all the way up to standing. Go ahead and step your left foot forward and then turn to the right so you're facing the red wall. Open your arms. Good. It's kind of like you're going to give yourself a hug. Take your right arm underneath your left. Keep your elbows where they are. And then try to get your hands together, eagle arms. Lift your elbows. Send your hands forward. That's the stretch. Good. Now point your toes facing out. Bend your knees. 
God is supposed to really point those toes outwards. Good. From a physical perspective, most importantly, you want to press those inner thighs back. Yeah, try not to let the knees buckle in. I don't care how, how low you squat. Some of you are going to squat deeper than others. I'm more concerned about the form. See if you can lift your toes, just your toes. Good. Let's compromise. Just take three more deep breaths. You know, ideally, if it was 90-minute class, I'd have you here for five minutes. We just don't have that time today. I'm sorry. Good. Straighten your legs as you exhale. Open your arms out again. Good. Look to the right over your right fingertips. Turn your right toes to face the back of the room. Turn your left toes in, warrior two. Bend your right knee 90 degrees. And if some of you have long legs, you might slide your left heel back a little bit. Good. It's the same action with your right knee. You're pressing it open. So if you can't see your big right toe, then press it more open to the right. Stack your knee over your pinky toe. Good. Can you spread your chest evenly? Most of us can, but can you also spread your upper back evenly? It's a little more difficult when you can't see something. This is the longest hold of the day. Good. See if maybe you can bend just a little bit deeper, but resist through your back leg. Keep it strong. Good. Nice job. Straighten that right leg. Triangle pose. Inhale. Reach for the bathroom wall. And then exhale. Drop the right hand down below the knee, above the shin bone, or above the ankle. So somewhere on the shin bone, usually, or on a block. Feel the head of your right femur bone plugging back into its socket, and then extend your left arm out and over your left ear, palm facing down. We call it the extended version. So again, the extended version means you're expanding that bubble. Good. If you'd like to add the right arm and you can keep the integrity of your lower body, then reach the right arm forward parallel to your left arm. It's kind of like putting hot sauce on something. If it's already spicy, don't put hot sauce on it. Good. Right hand down, left arm up. Look down in front of your right toes. Only half moon of the day. Bend your right knee. Crawl the right hand forward about a foot. Lift your left leg off the ground. Use your fingertips if you need to. A block's not a bad idea. Good. And then really drive that left leg nice and straight. Yeah, level one, stay here or fall on your face. Level two, extend your left arm over your left ear. And if you want level 10, reach the right arm forward parallel to your left arm. Yeah, these are just options, guys. Remember the non-competitive part of the practice? Good. Now, triangle is just like this pose in a sense with the hips. We're going to come back there. Bend your right knee as slowly as you can. Drop step your left foot to the back of the mat. Once it lands, re-straighten your right leg. Good. The right hand still on the right shin, guys. Triangle pose. As you inhale, come up to standing. As you exhale, re-bend your right knee 90 degrees. Warrior two, please. And use a block if you're smart. Right hand to the floor outside of your right foot. Side angle pose. Classical versions on the outside of the foot, guys. Press the knee into your inner arm and then extend your left arm over your left ear. Anytime you hear traditional or classical version of the pose, you know it's going to be a hell of a lot harder. Because classically, people didn't sit down as much in chairs and have bad posture, so their hips were more open. So this was easier for them. Good. If you're looking for more heat, reach your right arm forward parallel to your left arm, only if you keep the integrity of your lower body. As slow as you can, come back to, to warrior two pose. Good. Straighten your right leg. Pivot your right foot in parallel to your left. Take your left arm underneath your right, eagle arms like you're about to hug yourself. And then get your palms together. Lift your elbows up. Send the hands towards the wall in front of you. Back to goddess pose. Point the toes out and bend your knees deeply. Now, as you soften the tailbone down, you naturally will engage your core. 
Good, again, press those thigh bones back like crazy and then find a sustainable squat for you. This time I challenge you to lift your heels off the ground, come up to your tippy toes. Yeah, some of you are a little more proficient with this, maybe the toenails. Good. Nice job, bring the heels down, straighten out your legs, open the arms. Look over to the left fingertips. Good. Spin your right foot in. Bend your left knee 90 degrees. Warrior two. Again, prop that left knee open. If you have long legs, slide the right foot back a little more. Spread the chest. Spread the upper back. Good. Whatever you're looking at with your eyes, look at it with a little bit of love. So you're not panicking. You're not waiting for what's next. You're being present. Follow the breath. Good. Good. Second longest hold of the day. Let's compromise with about three or four deep breaths. Good. Very nice. Straighten your left knee. Triangle pose. Inhale, reach out towards second street. And then exhale, drop the left hand below your knee for everybody, for most of us above the ankle. And then the head of the left femur bone plugs back and into its socket as you pull that outer left hip in. Then you can reach your right arm out and over your right ear and extend, expand that bubble. Don't forget about the square. Good. If you'd like a little more hot sauce, reach your left arm forward parallel to your right arm. Don't do it just because I suggested it. Whether I suggest it or not, the option's there. Good. Can you straighten that arm? Good. Half moon pose. Left hand down, right arm up. Use your eyeballs. Look down in front of your left toes. Don't look away. Crawl your left hand forward. Lift your right leg. Lift your right arm. You know, the transitions are very much a part of the practice. In fact, they're poses in their own right. Good. Maybe it's a good way. You know, we're in L.A. I'm sure there's some actors in here. Think about it as you're not breaking character. You're staying with your breath the whole time, not just for 10 at a time. Good. Extend your right arm over your right ear. Maybe reach your left arm forward if you're borderline crazy. Good. Good. And then triangle pose. Bend your left knee as softly as you can land the right foot. Please do. Once you land, straighten your left leg. And then as you inhale, come back to standing. And as you exhale, rebend your left knee, warrior two. Use the block if you're smart. Left hand to the floor outside, outside of your left foot. Open your right chest. Press the outer left knee into your inner left arm and then extend your right arm out over that right ear. Extended. Good. Maybe reach your left arm forward. Good. Keep the integrity. Give your right leg a little more responsibility. Good. As slow as you can, back to warrior two. Nice job. Nice release coming up. Straighten your left knee, hands on the hips. Pivot your left foot in parallel to your right. Lift your chest. Take an inhale. Fold all the way down as you exhale. Go ahead and stay with the hands on the hips for a moment. Pull the heart forward. Come into a flat back and then bring your fingertips to the ground in front of you. Stay flat. Good. Center your left hand. Reach your right arm up. Find your twist. Now, some of you with long arms are on the palm. Some of you with short arms are on blocks or fingertips. Keep more weight in your left leg than in your right leg. Good. Again, it's about efficiency. Now, being flamboyant takes energy. So if you sink your left hip down, it's a little more flamboyant. Good. Right hand down. Switch. Reach your left arm up. Feel the breath. Hmm. Left hand down, drop the head, crawl your hands underneath. So maybe turn your hands around so the fingertips point back, and then crawl yourself underneath yourself. If you can't touch the ground, use your elbows. Grab your elbows. Notice how gravity is your friend. You know, that's all we're working with. I'm not going to make the practice difficult. You're not going to make it difficult. Gravity might have something to say about that. 
So whether you're resisting gravity in a strength pose or surrendering to it here, just notice how that's all we're dealing with today. Good, release. Bring the hands up to your hips. Little bend in the knees if you need it. Come all the way up to standing. Look to the front of the room. Step up to the top of the mat. Feet together. Chair pose. Bend the knees. Squat down. Reach up. Take a few breaths. Tilt your tailbone down so actually the spine is straight and not bending. Good. Forward fold. Straighten the legs. Flat back inhale, create the space. Stepper lightly, hop the feet back. Take the full vinyasa, lower slow. And cobra up dog, feel the rhythmic flow. Downward facing dog as you exhale, here we go. Squeeze the right knee into your chest, look at your right thumb. Try to step your right foot where your right thumb is, obviously remove it first. Back foot flat, warrior one, reach your arms straight up towards the sun. Bring your hands behind your back, interlace the fingers. Inhale, peel the chest open, fold forward as you exhale. Good, over the knee, maybe inside of the leg. Good. You know, if you have really broad shoulders and your OCD, this combination gets a little annoying because you could spend all the time trying to get your shoulder inside of your right thigh. Try to be with what is. Stay low, bring your hands to the floor, inside of your right foot, inside. Go ahead and spin onto your left toes. Keep your right knee stable where it is and bring your right hand underneath your right foot. Let's see if you can grab the outside of your right ankle with your right hand and then maybe shimmy your right shoulder underneath the back of your right knee. Most of us will just get part of the bicep. And then bring your left hand to the inner right foot so it's like you're almost framing that right foot with your hands. Last step of the pose, juice up your left leg. And if you're droopy in your left knee, you might as well have it on the floor, which is also fine. Good. Good. And then slowly release. Downward facing dog, step back. Just go. Simple step back. Bring the left knee into your chest. Look at your left thumb. See if you can step it right there. Back foot flat, warrior one. Reach your arm straight up above. And then with a little bit of love, hands behind the back, interlace the fingers. Inhale, peel the chest open. Fold forward as you exhale. Over the leg, inner left thigh, you choose. Use your breath. Hmm. Uh, let's stay low. Bring your hands to the floor inside your left foot. Spin onto your right toes. Bring the left hand underneath your left foot to the outer left ankle. Good. Yeah. And then maybe get the shoulder underneath. Maybe bring the right hand to frame the foot as you kind of have the thumbs touching. Juice the right leg up. Now if we had time today, I'd teach you some pretty fun arm balances from this position. Yeah, maybe tomorrow. Good, down dog, release, left hand inside, simply step back. Good, now we're gonna do something that's gonna frustrate a lot of you. Slide forward to plank pose. Good, know that your knees can come down here, it's fine. Otherwise, crawl the hands forward so it's no more a linear plank pose. Crawl the hands forward as much as you can. It's gonna be different for everybody. If you can go all the way to the wood floor, go to the wood floor. Good. Expand the circle. Contract the square. Try not to panic. If you start to panic, remind yourself that this is a yoga class. Good. Now let's do the opposite. Walk back to plank and walk your feet into a short down dog. Very short down dog. <clears throat> and come high up onto your tippy toes. Come as high on the tippy toes as you can. The palms stay flat. Palms are flat. Yes, high on the tippy toes. In case you're unaware of what this is, it's basically a prep for a handstand. Good, lift those hips high. Good, don't worry, we get to do it again. Walk the feet back to that very unnatural plank pose. Walk the hands a little bit forward, if not a lot forward. It's kind of like one of those little roller things for your abs, in a sense. But we're not going to roll it out. Huh. You know, if you come back tomorrow, maybe we'll do push-ups from this position. Good. 
back to down dog, regular down dog. Good. Step your right foot through, spin your back foot flat. Warrior one, inhale, reach your arms up. Hands to the mat as you exhale. Right leg back, lower slow. Just starting to build the heat, build the juice. Cobra up dog, you choose. Downward facing dog, as you exhale, step your left foot through. Back foot flat, warrior one, inhale, reach up. Good, hands to the mat as you exhale, left leg back, lower slow. And cobra upward dog, feel the rhythmic flow. And then downward facing dog, as you exhale, drop your head low. Hmm. Oh, nice job. Now let's go ahead and move on from here. Hmm. Uh, go ahead and walk your feet a little further apart from each other and then point your toes out like a duck. Good. Yogi squat at the back of your mat. Unplug your hands. Crawl them all the way back. Bend your knees and squat all the way down. And bring the hands together in front of your heart center. And pull the chest upwards. Let's take a few breaths. And find that reconnection with your breath. Good. Bring your hands to the floor, straighten your legs, forward fold, parallel your feet, lift your toes off the ground, and slide your hands all the way underneath your feet, if you can. And usually if you bend your knees enough, you can get your whole hand underneath your feet. And if you need to keep the bend in the knees, you can. Otherwise, maybe straighten out your legs. Hmm. And then slowly release. Downward facing dog. Crawl the hands all the way back out to the top of the mat. And let's reset. Uh, moving on from here. Go ahead and lift your right leg in the air. Inhale. Right knee, right elbow as you exhale. Good. Right leg back. Inhale. Right knee, left elbow. Squeeze. Good. Right leg back. Please inhale. Step it all the way through, crescent pose. Stay on your back toes, and as you inhale, reach your arms straight up. Good. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Take your time here. Start to turn to the right as much as you can, and then eventually use your elbow to clip the outer right knee. Tricep or armpit, please. And know that you can set your left knee down here. It's fine. It's a modification, just a sign of intelligence anytime you do that. Otherwise, it should feel nice. Decompress through your spine. Hmm. Use your breath. That's the detoxifying agents, the elements of the earth, the water that we drink, the air that we breathe, the fire that we build. It's not just the twist. Nice and slow. Come back to crescent pose as you inhale, reach up. And bring your hands down to the mat as you exhale. Step back to plank pose, feet together. Good. Feet together. Roll onto the outer edge of your left foot. Keep your hands down. Good. And then climb up to your right fingertips. And then finally float your right arm straight up. Good. So that's the order that it should always happen in. Good. And if you'd like to set your left knee down, that's fine. Otherwise, extend your right arm over the right ear. You see, skill is the ability to perform a task in a timely manner. Some people can do it so fast you don't even see you know, the order that they do things. Until you become very skillful, you must be slow. Right arm up, last inhale. Let's mean in down dog, take the vinyasa if you want it. Otherwise, skip it. Hmm. Oh, nice job. Now let's do this other side. Go ahead and lift your left leg as you inhale. Left knee, left elbow, exhale. Inhale, sweep your left leg high, and then twist it across to your right elbow side. Inhale, sweep your left leg back, and then step it all the way through. Stay on your back toes. Crescent pose. Inhale, reach your arms straight up above. Take your time. Hands to the heart. Pull that lower belly in, and then twist. Twist to the left. Use your right elbow, tricep, or armpit. If you get the whole armpit over there, you might as well straighten the right arm down and reach your left arm straight up. 
Otherwise, you know, if you're like me, you're, you're pretty tight here. And you might be getting a deeper twist than those people with their arms spread open just by keeping your hands together. Good. And then nice and easy, nice and slow. Inhale, come back to crescent pose. Hands to the ground as you exhale. Remember this, step back to plank pose. Feet together, outer edge of your right foot. Keep your hand down, come up to your left fingertips. And then finally, float your left arm straight up, stack the shoulders. The same option, maybe set your right knee down on the floor. And then reach that left arm out and over the left ear. See if you can lift your hips higher. So there's like a little rainbow arc underneath your body. Good. Left arm up, inhale. Let's meet in downward facing dog as you exhale. Again, vinyasa if you want it. Hmm. Yeah, definitely that body's warm now. Let's see if we can do this last little standing thing that's on the agenda today. First, take a nice big inhale through your nose. And then open up your mouth. Let it go. Good. Right leg lifts as you inhale. Go ahead and step it all the way through as you exhale. Back foot flat. Just come up to warrior one for about a breath or two. Bring your hands to your hips. Straighten your right knee. And step your back foot in about a foot. If you're real tight, if you're not as tight, maybe half a foot. Point your left toes to point a little more forward. So the front left hand corner of your mat, the toes are pointed there. And then bring the hands behind the back and either take reverse prayer or touch your fists together if you're real tight like me. Good. Pull that right hip back. And then as you go really slow, start to lean forward. Try to keep your back flat the whole time. Most of us are going to go about halfway. Yes. Now, we're not going to round today. We're just going to keep that back nice and flat. I find that about 10% of people can go past halfway with a flat back. That means maybe one or two people in here. Keep the weight in your left heel if you can. As we prepare for liftoff, bend your right knee as you inhale. Lift your left leg as you exhale, warrior three. Good. Yes. Now, you're like a human teeter-totter at this point. Good. Here's the next pose. It's not an easy one. See if you can dip your nose closer to your toes. But lift your left leg higher with your hands behind your back. We call it floating standing splits. Whether you fall on your face or you hold it for three hours, it's yoga either way. Good. Let's turn this into traditional standing splits. Release your hands down to the ground. and Relax your neck. Crawl the hands a little closer into your toes. Really flirt with lifting the left leg higher. You know, in fact, if you, you know, hold something for three hours and think you're good at it, it's less yogic than if you fall on your face and don't care. Good. Now let's do the opposite. Place your palms flat on the ground. Come high up on your right tippy toes, as high as you can. Just kind of like we did earlier. So all the weight's in the hands, in the palms. Yes, to prep for a handstand. Nice. Mm hmm a little higher. Downward facing dog. Nice job. Hmm. Last standing side to go. Let's do it. Lift your left leg as you inhale. And then step it all the way through as you exhale. Back foot flat. Let's come up to warrior one just for a breath or two. And then remember the hands come to the hips. Straighten out your left knee. Step your back foot in about 6 to 12 inches with the toes pointed a little more forward. Bring the hands behind your back, same stretch as before, fists or palms. Good, heavy on the right heel with a flat back, lean forward about halfway. Good. And as you go with the flat back here, you're gonna pull any, any arching out of the back. Good, use the right foot to steer your left hip back. Good. Now this time, let's see if we can coordinate our breath with our movements. Inhale, bend your left knee. Exhale, lift your right foot off the floor. Warrior three. And then hovering for a couple of breaths, seeing if you can square your right hip level with your left hip. And then perhaps dipping the nose close to the toes, just playfully lifting your right leg, whether it's a millimeter or three feet. You're like a human teeter-totter. 
Everybody, hands to the floor. Relax your neck. Crawl the hands a little closer in. Flirt with lifting your right leg higher. Flirt. Flirt gently, not forcefully. If you don't want to creep yourself out. Good. And then try to get your palms on the floor. Come up to your left tippy toes as high as you can. Keep the square tight. Expand the circle. Lift. That's it. Good. A little higher. Downward facing dog. Nice job. Good. Last vinyasa, if you want it, slide forward, plank pose. Exhale, lower down nice and slow. Cobra upward facing. Use your perfect technique. Downward facing dog. Hmm. The last strong minute of the practice. Slide forward to plank. Lower your forearms down to the ground. Good. Feel the belly. See if you can lift your belly half an inch towards your spine. Get as compact as possible. Good. Good. And then from here, go ahead and walk your feet in about a foot closer to your elbows. We call that dolphin pose. If you can tolerate more than a foot, then go more. Pull those hips back. Drive the forearms down. Feel those lat muscles where the shoulders and the back connect. Get on fire. And then maybe, perhaps, come up to your tippy toes if you're feeling strong. Good. Lift the hips. Last three. Two. One. Child's pose. Set your knees down. Rest your hips on your heels. Ah, that's all the standing stuff today. So go ahead and stay on your knees, but come up to a kneeling position. Press your knees together, separate your ankles, and then either take a seat in between your feet or perhaps on a block. Stretch the tops of your legs. I encourage you to close your eyes once you get into this pose. And a few of you might lean back halfway or maybe all the way. Just be very mindful of your knees, whatever you decide to do, please. And come back to your breath. Good. Hmm. Uh, breath control is the practice. If you're all the way on your back, and slowly come up. Everybody just make your way onto your back, so you're laying down on your back. So. You gotta place the soles of your feet on the ground, bridge pose. And parallel the feet, press the feet down, lift your hips up. And if you're open in the shoulders, interlace the fingers behind the back. And feel the space in the neck. Good. Use the breath here. The breath is the medicine. The shape of the body here is the conduit in which the medicine can flow through you. You're the doctor writing your own prescription. And you choose. You're the only one who truly knows how you feel. Stay here or perhaps take it into a different or deeper back bend, which means upward facing bow, hands behind the shoulders, fingers forward, any of them for that matter. I don't mind. Scorpion, regular bow, camel. Hmm. Last inhale, and slowly release all the way down as you exhale. 
plow pose. Reach the legs straight up to the ceiling. You could stay here just so you're vertical. Or place the palms down and gently rock your feet up and over your head. So it's the deepest forward fold in the book. If you make it that far, consider taking your hands to your lower back. Walk the elbows in a little closer. And then if you want to take it to the next step, shoulder stand. One by one, lift your legs up towards the sun. Remember the elbows are in tight to the body. Good. And then just energizing through the breath. Hmm. Oh, very nice. For those of you in shoulder stance, slowly come back to plow pose. Legs back over the head. And then reach the arms forward, palms flat on the floor. Uh, press the palms down with vigor to slowly roll out of your spine, one vertebrae, and one rib at a time, until your lower back touches down. When it finally does, bring the knees into the chest, drop the knees over to the left. You can cross the legs if you want to go a touch deeper. Open the right arm to the right. Hmm. Everybody slowly switch. Come back to the center line. Drop the knees over to the right. Open your left arm over to the left. Hmm. Come back to the center line. Happy baby pose. Bend the knees. Reach out. Grab the outer edges of your feet. You try to spread your sacrum, the lower, the base of your spine, a little triangular bone. Try to flatten it against the surface. Hmm. Uh, this next pose is called Supta Bhadrakanasana, soles of the feet together. Let the feet hit the ground, knees drape open. Place the hands on the inner thighs to coerce the hips down. You're welcome to come into the seated version of this pose. And if you're in the seated version, hands on the feet, sit up tall, take an inhale, and then fold gently in as you exhale. So if you're on your back now, you'll be on the back the rest of the way. If you're seated, we still have a couple more poses. And try to stay present. That's the practice. Practice of presence. Good. If you're on your back, thread the needle pigeon. Stack your right ankle over your left knee. Thread through the triangular opening. If you're seated, Double-seated pigeon. You could take Sukhasana with a simple cross-legged seated position or single pigeon if you don't mind moving around to get into it. You know, back to that listening. You know, the 25% uh, the of what we hear, you know, the practice of listening, it all comes down to if we're always just talking, we're just regurgitating the information we already know. It's when we're listening that we learn something new. And so when you practice listening, to hopefully to be 100% there when you're, it's also that hopefully when we're outside of here, we'll be listening with our friends, our family. I think they call that compassion. 
so you're actually there. And then everybody change sides nice and easy. Move on to the opposite hip. And everybody slowly release. Last stretch. If you're seated, legs out in front of you. Grab your ankles or your feet. If you're on your back, just reach your legs straight up. Grab the backs of your legs. So just feel a nice pull, a gentle pull on your hamstrings and your lower back. Just going to be here for about six or seven breaths. And just find a little bit of symmetry. Symmetry is something that you know, just helps you have better posture. It helps you have a little more evenness. It's actually impossible to attain perfect symmetry. And then last inhale here. Shavasana, lay all the way down onto your back as you exhale. Get nice and comfortable. Close the eyes. Cover the eyes if you like. And then as big as you can, take a huge inhale through your nose, hold the breath in. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, let it go. Ah. Shavasana. Step one, acknowledgement with your heightened senses. Noticing what you notice, feeling what you feel, trying not to think about what you feel. And then the practice of non-attachment to all these things you notice, just letting them pass through you like energy, like water. Step two, attachment this time to the peaceful nature that you have created in your body energetically. And step three, relax.
And from here, everybody start to come back. Just little movements, fingers and toes. And eventually more bigger movements, the arms and the legs stretching overhead and forwards. And moving as if you would like to keep the peaceful energy you've created. Go ahead and bend the knees and roll over to your right side, please. And then finally, that seated position to end the practice. Press the hands down. Make your way up into a comfortable seat. Sitting up nice and tall. Lift the crown of your head. Feel the space, the posture. And bring the hands together in front of your heart center as you strengthen the most important muscle of all, that internal muscle of gratitude easiest route to happiness just to be grateful for what you already have in your life I mean, the simple things like you showed up today and you have a body to practice with you're healthy enough to make it here uh, and just see if you can notice throughout the rest of the day how the practice affected you not just physically but also emotionally Mentally. Uh, let's take one last cleansing inhale through the nose. Hold the breath in. <laughs> Bow the mind to the heart. Open the mouth. Let it go. <sighs> Namaste. Namaste.